Hi everyone, welcome back to Homeschool Peace. Today is a good and the beautiful science unit unboxing day. So let's go ahead and open this box together. Even if you've only been homeschooling for a short period of time, you probably already know that curriculum unboxing days are almost as good as opening up a Christmas or a birthday present. It's just so exciting to see inside the new material. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you this box from The Good and the Beautiful. It's one of their new science units. So let's go ahead and open this up together. All right, set that off to the side. Let's take a look at what's actually inside this box. The first thing to share with you is the reptiles, amphibians, and fish science unit pack. So this has all the information you need for teaching the lessons. It has the instructions, the student pages, and any of the things that need to be laminated, cut out, ready to go to teach the lessons. This unit comes shrink wrapped. It is not bound. It is not hole punched yet and there is some prep work that you do need to do to get it ready to go for your lesson. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be taking it from this form and get it into my binder and ready to go. Additionally in my box I have a few of the readers. I have the Curious Reptiles and Amphibians book, the Reptiles and Amphibians and Fish Questions and Answer book, and I also have Buzztail, the story of a rattlesnake. So in this video today, I'm not going to be going into a ton of detail of how I'm actually prepping this unit. If you are interested in that or say you're new to these science units, I do have a video linked below that walks you through the actual steps I take to prep this unit, as well as any of the office supplies that I use or prefer to use when actually preparing one of these units. In today's video, I'm just getting it ready. I'm getting it into the book and then I'm going to be taking the time to show you some close-ups of this material as well as close-ups of these readers. And then I'm going to be going through a complete sample lesson with you so that you get a good feel of what's included in this amphibians, reptiles, and fish unit. Our science unit is now complete. It is ready to go to be able to teach my students. So now I'm going to jump into this binder and show you what is included within the science unit. The first thing I wanted to share with you is this little zipper pouch. I include this in all of my science units. It is where I store the vocabulary words that I laminated and cut out. I put them right in here and that when I'm going through the lessons, I just access the cards and pull them out and put them on my science wall as we are going through the words that are important for each lesson. In the beginning of the unit, you can see here the table of contents. There are 13 lessons for this unit. Now I have younger students. My students are kindergarten, first grade, and third grade this year. So for most of the good and the beautiful units, I find that I need to break up one of these lessons over three school days. If you have older children that are moving faster and can handle sitting longer, obviously maybe you can get a lesson done in one or two days. And again, with those younger students, you might go three days, four days, do whatever works well for your students, but sort of gives you an idea of how long you would expect it would take to go through this science unit, 13 lessons, you know, breaking that up over three school days would be what my family would do. You can see here, flipping to the next page, some of the information that is included within this unit. The first thing is the science journal. The science journal is basically, in my family, we just use a three-pronged folder for each of my students. And what they do is I put the science papers that we're working on, their student pages that are included right into this teacher book, and it says which student pages to copy for your students around the table. And I just copy those as we are going through the lesson and they put it right into to their science journal. You can choose to prep that science journal ahead of time, having all the student worksheets already copied ahead of time and put in those folders. For my students, we sort of just do it as we are doing each lesson. We have our science wall, which again is those vo vocabulary words that you already laminated, just stick up on your board. There also are some mini books included in this unit. It can range for different units how many mini books there are. This one had three. So this one being the frogs and toads around the world, 
Um, we have newts and salamanders and the life of a salmon fish. So these are the three books that were right included in that shrink wrap material. And the only thing I did, I laminated the front cover, the back cover, and I stapled it together. I try to keep my books as compact as possible. You know, there's other ways you can bind these mini books. There's other ways that you can divide up your pages as you go through the units. I find just keeping it as simple as possible and as small as possible is really helpful for just storing the material. The next thing that you'll see here is it says that there's content for older and younger students. So I have those younger students. So sometimes I find that the material that I'm going through, I will look at the lesson ahead of time. And sometimes I find that it's just a little advanced for my kindergarten student. So that would be something that maybe I would either skip over that or maybe breeze through it just quickly and then move into another part of the lesson. If you have older students, there are ad a extension lessons that are included within most of these units. And so this unit does have extension lessons for their seventh and eighth graders. I would say that this material is more designed for that kindergarten through let's say sixth grade age student. The extension lessons are if you're teaching it to younger students and you have some older students that are tagging along, you can then give those students those extension lessons to have them be able to still participate in your more, uh, you know, one room schoolhouse approach to science and have them have some extra work to do as part of the lessons. So right here we can see there is content for some of those older students. Here it says for grades five through eight, as well as we have content for maybe younger students. You know, there are some lessons that include extra content that's better for our younger students for K through four. So this is what's included within your unit information. Right here we can see there's the read aloud book pack. These were the books that I was sharing earlier. So we have the Buzz Tale. This is a reader book, and this is available right from the Good and the Beautiful's website. And this can be something that you can read to your students, or if you have an older student who would be able to read it on their own, this is a great book here. And then we also have Curious Reptiles and Amphibians. That's another one that you can go get pick up right from the Good and the Beautiful site when you're ordering your material and be able to include this as part of your lessons. Taking and moving on to the next page, we have here the lesson extensions. The lesson extensions goes along with this book. This is the optional grade seven through eight reading book. So this one is if you have some older students who are tagging along and being part of your lessons, this is a great book to pick up to go along with their lessons, which then tie right in to those extension lessons. We can see here the supplies needed sheet. I found like with this unit, I haven't taught it yet. I've just gone through it. I just opened it up with you, but going through it compared to some of the other units that I have recently been going through, I felt like the supplies needed were was very small. You can see right here, there's even some lessons that there's none listed or just something like glue. Um, I felt like everything was pretty simple. You know, there's a few lessons that you might have to gather or prepare ahead of time, like a hard boiled egg you might need to prepare ahead, ahead of time, but I didn't feel like this was that extreme of a supply list, pretty easy things to gather. So now I'm going to jump into an actual lesson and get, give you a feel for how the, the flow of a lesson and what's included in this material. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you lesson four, and lesson four is all about lizards. And you can see here on this page, I have this little sticky tab that just has a number four on it. That is what I use to break up all the lessons within the book. You know, you could use page dividers, and I have in other units, but I found the more that I add to these books, the thicker they get and the harder they are to store. So I have found a little sticker to divide each lesson works the best when I'm trying to organize the material. We can see at the top of the page, the objective. It says to help children learn and distinguish characteristics of lizards and identify several types of lizards from around the globe and understand that lizards can live in most climates. To pause there, one thing I noticed that was really great about this unit is the pictures and the colors that are mixed in with the unit pages. I've seen this with many of the Good and the Beautiful units over the last few years. They've changed a lot and added a lot more color in the teacher material and even the student's material. And it just makes it really great when you open it up as the teacher. 
The preparation is to cut out the locate the lizards card, and I've already done that, and that's in this envelope. There is fancier ways you can organize your material inside each of these lessons. I have found that a simple envelope works great, and I can hole punch it, stick it right inside the lesson material, and then pull out whatever cards that I need. So do what works with you, for you, but a simple paper envelope is a great way to go. So I have here different types of lizard cards cards and some information about it. It said also to print for each child one of the locate a lizard world map and to cut out the lizard circles. Uh, you can do this ahead of time if you would like to cut them out for your students. I think it's a great activity for your students to cut out the circles. So this is the sheet they're working on. It is a picture of a world map and then at the bottom are these little images that they can cut out or you can cut out ahead of time for them. And so then you can go right into the lesson material. I should also point out that the supplies you need are super simple with glue, a glue stick, and scissors. And so right here for lizard facts, I would read to my students, take a look at the Indo-Chinese forest lizard. And the picture's right here in the teacher's book. And I would say, what type of animal do you think a lizard is? And I'd let my kids talk and they probably would come up with that lizards are reptiles. And so yes, most lizards have thick scaly skin that can protect them from injury and help them retain moisture. A few lizard species have a venomous bite. So I can go through and just read through the information telling them about the lizard facts that are right here in the teacher's material as well as then moving into the next activity which is a molting activity. And I'm supposed to read right to my students that Lizards have some features that set them apart from other animals. One of their most valuable traits is their thick, scaly skin that most lizards have. It gives them protection from enemies. So I'd continue reading that on as I go through it. So the activity is to pour a very small amount of white glue into each child's cupped hand. Have the child use their finger and spread the glue in a thin layer across his or her palm and finger and clean any of the sticky fingers and wipe up the excess glue. Have the child gently blow on their hands until it dries. And you can continue with this section until it's dry and then come back to it, which is just a fun activity for the kids. They're just gonna have to sit there with glue on their hands and let them it dry. It says here to have the children peel the dried glue from their hands any way they choose. And then uh, read to the students when they're say, go ahead and start trying to peel that off. You can read to them that snakes and lizards and several other types of reptiles and animals molt or shed their old skin. So such a fun activity. They can see right there the glue. It's almost like a molting process and they can see that. And have the children examine the peelings and notice how their skin texture is actually visible in that dried glue. You know, molted skin retains some of the texture and pattern and even color from the animals from when it's shed. And so that moves into the next part, which is your science wall. So your science wall can be something that you have, as even a back of a door that you have in a room. Um, maybe it could be, you know, a bulletin board, or simply it could also be a poster board or a trifold board. I used a trifold board for a while when I didn't have a science wall or a school room, and it was something easy that I could fold up and put away and then open up the trifold board during our science time and stick the words up on there. So do whatever works for you. It does not have to be fancy. This is the science word for the for the lesson and you could have your students read it or you could read it. Molt, the act of shedding an outer layer such as, a fe as feathers, skin, or an exoskeleton as an animal grows larger. So this is the special word and then I would stick it up into the board. From there, you can choose, you know, for my family, as I said, we break these lessons over about three days. Right there would be a great stopping point in my family. You could also extend the lesson a little bit by reading about lizards right here in your reptiles and amphibians book. There's a great page about lizards right in here. So you could add that as part of the lesson too. But right there, that's a great cutoff point. You, you introduced it, you had your activity with the glue, and then you had your word. You know, I would probably stop the lesson and come back tomorrow, but if you have older students, you could continue. So let's go in to day two.
So jumping into day two, it starts right with lizards, limbs, and tails. So I might do a quick review. I might even start the next day lesson. Again, maybe if I didn't read something from this book, I could read there. Or if I have other science books that are related to lizards, I might pull out one of my children encyclopedias or other books that I have on reptiles, and I might pull that out and do a little reading just to sort of kick the lesson off. And then I move right into this lizards, limbs, and tails. And I would read right here to the, from my from the book that all lizards have tails, which they use in a variety of ways, including defense, balance, water propulsion, and grasping objects. So I would continue reading down through that. Did you know that not all lizards have four legs? And then I keep going through, reading to my students, showing some of the pictures right from the teacher's guide, and I go right to the next activity, which is locate a lizard activity. These locate a lizard activity cards were included in that shrink wrap material and I just laminated them and pre-cut them. And so what I want to do is take these cards and place them face down in front of the children. And then what I want to do is cut out the lizard circles and place them face up near the cards. So we have here this world's map and the lizard pictures that are at the bottom. And what I wanna do is I wanna have these cut out ahead of time and ready to go for this part of the lesson, at least for my teacher map. I would go and talk about how there's a variety of lizards and they live in different um, habitats, they have different shape sizes. And so I would find a card and I would read it. This is the Komodo dragon. I am the largest and heaviest lizard species. And maybe if you have children who are reading, they could read it aloud, measuring up to 10 feet in length and weighing up to 330 um, pounds. I make my home in the tropical climate of Indonesia. And so I would keep reading through this. So as I read this card, I want my students to take the picture of the Komodo dragon, which is the same picture that's on the map and identify that. And so they can cut it out. If I photocopied it, they can photo, they can use the one that they photocopied and cut out. And then they're gonna use their glue stick and they're going to stick this right onto Indonesia. There is a key included into the teacher's manual and I can see the key right here. So if I didn't know where Indonesia was, I could stick it right here. And it is also on the other part of the map identified. So there's different places that I can stick it right there. And then I'm going to then go through every single card. So I'm going to pick up the next card or let my student pick up the card, the Draco lizard. And so I'm going to read through this and say, I live in Asia. So I have my students find the Draco lizard image. They would cut out that image and then they're going to then paste it right onto their map, right on Asia. And so you're going to go through this exercise. This is a lot of cards and this is a lot of reading for young students. So even though it feels like we just started day two of the lesson, by the time I kicked off the lesson, read maybe some info from this book about lizards, read through all of these cards and they work on their sheet. For my young students, that's the cutoff point and where I would end day two. So jumping in now for my family on day three. Again, I could kick it off by reading something from one of my books or any of the other encyclopedias that I have. Sometimes I find if I just do a quick search on YouTube for kids lizard videos, there's so many great options of extra little videos on YouTube. So sometimes I start my lessons off with a quick video, get their attention, you know, three, four minutes, and then we jump right into the lesson material. So this is the lizard lifestyle. So most lizards have from eggs that are laid by the mother and then buried underground or hidden beneath logs or rocks. So again, I'm reading right from the book. I'm going through all this information. I'm letting my children look through the pictures as I'm reading it and holding it up to them. And then it ends with saying that God equipped lizards with complex eyes that work to magnify what the lizard sees so that it can tell how far away another creature is. Even though some lizards have no eyelids and therefore cannot close their eyes, they have excellent vision and some can even look in one direction with one eye and another direction with another. So I can read all this information to my kids. I would go and maybe review some of the information that we did over the last couple days, make sure they finished up the activity sheet from their science journal. And that would be a complete lesson for my students in the younger, kinder, uh, younger elementary age, being kindergarten, first grade, and third grade. So if you have older students, if you flip the page, we have for grades seven through 
through eighth. This is the extension lesson, so let's take a look at that now. This extension lesson for lizards is all about the North American venomous Gila monster. And so their student would read through this information. They could take notes as they are reading and put those notes in that student journal. And while they're reading through it, they're going to be finding some out some great information and facts about this lizard being the largest native lizard species in North America. And when they go through it, there's a section that talks about in 1990 that they scientists were able to find a chemical in um, the saliva of the Gila monster, which it says the substance has the properties that are helpful for treating patients with type two diabetes and Parkinson's disease. So your students would continue reading it, but up at the top you can see for sort of step two of this assignment is if you were a scientist, you would ask your students this, if they were a scientist in a laboratory studying the effects of this chemical with diabetes and Parkinson's disease, what questions would you wanna answer with your research? And in your science journal, write these questions and some possible ways you could set up an experiment to test the related hypothesis. So let your students sort of think through that. That could be something that then they write out in their journal. The last thing to point out, if you are using this reptiles, amphibians, and fish questions and answer book, because again, this is one that is um, designed for those older seventh through eighth grade students, there is a section on lizards and you can have your student read through these questions and answers. And again, they can can take some notes, maybe dig a little deeper, have them do a little research on a lizard that interests them as well. And that is the complete lesson for Lizards Lesson 4. The very last thing I want to share with you is just some other really awesome student worksheets or activities that are in included in these units. Obviously, by just sharing one lesson, I wasn't able to show everything. So these are just some highlights of some really cool sheets that I found when going through this. I found this game incredible. It's a snake shuffle game. And so there's a little game they get to play as well as these little cards that go with it, which have like some true false questions like snakes here with their jaw bones, true or false. And it's true and it has information that snakes here by feeling the vibrations from the ground through their jaw bones. And so it's this fun little activity that they can see if answered correctly, move ahead one space. So I thought that was a really awesome, fun game that I'm excited to play with my my students when we go through the lesson on snakes. Additionally for snakes, um, you know, awesome pictures. Like look at this guy, so great pictures. You have these little um, words at the bottom they get to cut out for the snake's anatomy and they get to stick and paste that on. I know my students are going to love that. They love anything they get to cut out and glue. Talking about cutting out, we have a turtle shell and then what's inside or what's under the shell. This picture I thought was really cool. My young student who was near me while I was working on this even saw this and had to stop and just look at it. You know, awesome pictures, great colors, just so cool. I have for this lesson, this was with lesson five. Um, this is just talking about alligators and crocodiles and there's some really great pictures. So a lot of their cards that, you've already that I've already laminated, just amazing, really cool pictures. Um, we went into saying that there's also um, fish involved in because this is obviously reptiles amphibians and fish i haven't really touched much on fish here were some cool um unique fish cards and then the words and they get to match those up as part of that lesson there is also one of the lessons that has a great word search. I know my older student's gonna really like that, finding the words. Even just something like this, this is a, almost like it looks like a notebooking sheet. It's on reptiles versus amphibians, where it just has some information that they can follow through. I think this is really cool and just such a different cool look in the science material. There's this one on earthworms. I didn't cut this out yet, but you would cut along the lines and they build this puzzle. I kept it as one sheet. We can work on this whenever we get to the lesson, I figured they would enjoy cutting and then we can build it together. Here's on fish. We have a fish anatomy sheet as well where they can put the information to identify the words based on the fish anatomy. With fish, there's like a fish scramble. My kids were, are going to love this one. For frogs, this one was cool. They have the frog life cycle chart that I laminated. And then within the uh, lesson, we have the little circle cards that they're, that I'm gonna let them stick onto the laminated chart. So that's really fun. Um, 
last thing that I pulled out is a Venn diagram comparing crocodiles and alligators and little compara croc facts. And so little facts that they can cut out and then glue on their di Venn diagram. So, I mean, these were just a couple things I pulled out. There is so much in this book, so much in this unit, beautiful colors, awesome pages fun activities. I'm really excited to be able to use this with my students. So if you have any questions about this material, or if you just want to see something more, I would love to show it to you. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for joining me while we unbox this material. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I do post new content. And don't forget to hit that like button. And I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.